I'm very uh, pleased today to have a few minutes to chat to Dr. Priscilla Felimoni, uh, who is the uh, service director in the um, Provincial Health Service of Sofala Province in Bera, Mozambique. Um, and she um, co-authored a recent publication in the journal on how primary health care in, in Bera experienced and sort of dealt with uh, Cyclone Idai, which, which um, of course was in 2019 now, so it's a few years later and quite a good time to sort of reflect on um, what happened and how they have coped since then. So welcome to you. Thank you, Prof. Yeah. Bob, it's uh, my pleasure to meet you. <laughs> um, so, so my first question really is, I mean, not many of us have lived through you know, a cyclone like this in a, in a city like Bera. I mean, maybe just for a, a minute or two, you can tell us what was it like to actually kind of live through something like this? Okay. <laughs> yeah, it is, you said it is, was the, the first time for us in Beira to live uh, in such situation, like uh, the cyclone died. Even my mom and my grandma, they never experienced it, uh, such cyclone in Beira. And we, it was a kind of the, that we do not believe that things will happen. <laughs> but the authority, the National Institute of Disaster Management, they said us to, to be prepared, you know, to do so and so in order to prepare our house. So we people, we are like, yeah, we cannot believe this will happen. It never happened in Beira. That's never happened in Beira. Some people we, we believe that it will will happen. And many of us will not believe that uh, that such thing of a cyclone mm -hmm. will hit a, a Beira seat. Yeah, it was, it, was, it, was, it was our first time to deal with the with the cyclones. And how many people take... actually are there in Beira? What, what, what's the population? At that time, it was almost 500 in Beira City. Only in Beira City. It's what, 500 or 5,000? 5,000 500,000 people. Yes, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The total but... population so far, it's almost uh, two, two, 2 million. Only right. from Beira City, that that time was almost five hundred thousand. Right. So, so there's quite a yeah. large number of people living in the sort of more rural areas around Beira. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when this cyclone struck, you know, Beira and of course the province. Um, I mean, what were the immediate issues, the immediate sort of effects on people's health? Um, you know, in terms of sort of morbidity and mortality, what what were the issues straight away? Okay. Yeah, that they, they made that impact. I will tell you in the in the public uh, public service <laughs> ways, <laughs> not on social era, but they, they made that impact for the destruction of the health facilities and equipment, including health systems. And this uh, condition and the provision of a uh, basic service for the community uh, immediately after the cyclone we were forced to stop offering service in the way we did it. Instead, we were used tents to offer basic service to the community. Most of the community, were, uh, they were, it is, <laughs> let me, let me try. They were, they were assisted in the central hospital. That that is a, a, a four-level hospital for our, for our system. We have four four-level hospital: primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary. The central hospital is a four-level of uh, assistance, you know, and the, was the only hospital opening because uh, is the the, the 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 more. Let me let me. <laughs> Seek for the best uh, word. It's the more robust hospital in Beira, no? right? Well, so, so many of people we was going to the central hospital while in health facilities we were creating 
uh, condition to, to, to offer basic health service. And this service, they were offered in, in tents. Right? We have tents and then rapidly we, 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 we arranged the tents to continue offering service. But some service we were not able to, to offer, such as delivery service. All, all, all delivery service we were sending to the central hospital because in, ten, in tents we had no condition. We yeah. only was doing the basic service in tents. That service with uh, will 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 need more assistance. That we will transfer this patient to the central hospital, and it becomes like that until when the the rain stops, and we were able, we were able to fix at least the the sailing of our health facility, not in the proper way, but in the way that we can protect the, the rest of the equipment and we can offer minimum security to do the service while we were waiting for the more resilient construction. That it, it, it's a, a long way. Until now, while I'm talking, we are reconstructing our health, health, health facility in a resilient way. So, so what, um, what does that mean, actually? So, because it sounds like, what, from what you're saying, that a large number of the primary healthcare facilities were essentially destroyed in the cyclone. You then had to try and set services up in tents. Obviously, that was limited. Um, so, as you build back, you know, these primary healthcare facilities, what are you doing to make them more resilient, you know, for the future? So for the future, in 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 accordance to Minister of Health and the, our National Institute of uh, Cyclone Management, uh, we were formed our our engineers in the system. Where they were formed in how to build resilient infrastructure. In 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 coordination with the ONU Habitat, a, a United Nations. Uh, agents, we take care of uh, the resilient construction on new habitats. We are working on design resilient structure. So every engineer, every agent or company who wants to build a new health facility needs to to follow uh, that rules. You know right. about the tents, about the infrastructure, and it is it's a obligation to to follow that rule to construct. We say we need to to rebuild it, to rebuild it, but rebuild better. Our insta infrastructure must be better than it was years ago before the cyclone. Yeah, we call the, our 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 lemma. Our lemma is uh, I don't know. <laughs> our sayings, you know, it's build better. Right. So, so yes. Com coming back though to the. Um, to when you had the cyclone and you had to then offer services, as you say, in tents and through the central hospital. Um, I mean, what were the kind of problems, acute problems that people were coming with? I mean, I can imagine there might have been injuries, there might have been, um, you know, outbreaks of gastroenteritis and so on with all the water and sanitation issues. What, what, were, what were the sort of health impact immediately that, that you, you, you had to deal with? Okay, my death impact, it was not that uh, related to injuries. Né? Many of them, it was related to, to, to injury, mo most of the patients. It was a, a, a fun thing that at that time, we we, we, we not said the of the, 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 the patients visiting our, our, our health facility. It was a kind of a, let the, 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 the health workers to deal with the, the, the injured people, and we will come later. That uh, light disease, you know, like fever, uh, minus, uh, that uh, uh, minor thing, it's uh, light disease, you know, people were, were not uh, able to come to, 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 to our facility. It, was, it wasn't because we were, we were telling them to come. It was them, th themselves, they are conscious. 
was they were they were not come but the serious injuries we 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 come to to our healthy facilities I, uh, I, and I, it was it was not a, a large number because it was at night and the men of of the people we uh, oh i need to <laughs> to <laughs> we, we sheltered in 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 a, a, a safe place you know it was not a, a very huge number of, of patient injured but a small number with a, a, a serious injury most of them were sheltered in in a safe place um, and i mean one of the things that one might imagine is that you know the services for uh chronic conditions you know like uh mm -hmm. or, you know, or pregnant women you know hiv tb diabetes all these sort of okay. chronic conditions that, that that might well have been disrupted by the collapse in this in, in a way of primary health care what 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 was the um impact on on sort of those, those kind of routine chronic conditions as it were routine care for them okay the 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 the, the chronic condition at the at the beginning i think it was for first three days until the the rain stopping they we were not able to 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 to, to continue offering a, a treatment for, for for chronic disease but that stable stable patient but that patient which was not stable they were referred to the central hospital and we we have many patient in accommodation centers accommodation center was a a, a, tran a transition centers for people who lost the house who lost everything the government uh, put them in a we call it transition center where they will have shelter food eh, until they can be able to to reconstruct their their home and in these uh, um, transition centers they were health worker we 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 in the some ngos we work at, at the, we call it community based uh, organization you know we already worked with us and we were able to identify we 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 we, we announced the that the, 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 the chronic uh, patients we need a chronic patient with the hiv tuberculosis you know hypertension and diabetes we want them to come where to see uh, how can we continue the treatment? Some of them, they lost the uh, medical reports and the health system information was broke and we need to start it all over again, you know, about the medical report because they, they, they already gone with water, with the, the cyclone and we need to, to do it again until we recover the health, health, health information system because they are already in the health information seat, it was easy. But that time we need to work more with the memory of the community health workers and the memory of the patient about how, how what was your medication. All right, because, because what, the medical records uh, were, were lost. The yeah. Yes, the, 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 the medical registration was lost because of the, because of the rain. Yeah. Uh, most of the time, and the patients already lost some diseases they were easy to follow such as hiv the the treatment line is is only one you know and then uh, when the patient said that i i started to to take medicine on day that and we already know that what what line was was uh, in the system at that time it was it was easy for hiv for tuberculosis it was easy you know that only said and we have the community health workers it was easy to identify um, these people in the community, but diseases such as hypertension and the diabetes was uh, was more 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 difficult because each patient is this patient and it's it and have its <clears throat> each condition. You know? But at first time they were were all seen in the central hospital until we recover all the information system or minimal uh, security on our health centers. Then they were referred back to our to our health centers right. but we, we are we we we, may, we will pay more attention on this uh, health chronic disease and we are appealing them uh, do not stop your medication do not stop your medication please come here and with this uh, with this uh, health centers temporary temporary accommodation centers 
to the, the, the victims of the disaster. In, in, in each center, we had the, a, in kind of a, a small health facility with a basic service that we, we, we offer, that we need we, we to, to offer, such as a, a easy diagnostic. For, for more accurate diagnostic, we need to, to transfer to the central hospital. Right. So, I mean, I think um, probably Mozambique is going to experience, you know, further extreme weather events like this. Certainly South Africa has also experienced it. I think Malawi and Zimbabwe also experienced um, the effects of of this. Uh, and we, I, one imagines that this is going to happen again in the future. To So w what what lessons do you think you would share, you know, if you had to say, here's three or four key things that I want other um, health managers <laughs> to, to know about, to maybe be more uh, prepared or more more resilient to, 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 to cope with something like this. What, what would your sort of three or four key bits of advice be? Okay. <laughs> the first one, we need to have a standard operation procedure. To all, to all national health system and the private system, that would be a book ne? where it's written how to do pre-emergence, during the emergence, and the post-emergence. How health worker need to do? How a basic information that we need to pass to our patients in the our our, our community in general. That is the the first thing, and we need to 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 prepare this book. And it must be known from all, from from up, down, and down up. You know, in in all all national system, we all need to know, and we all need to to do the same thing. You know? They don't need to wait until the national level to come in, in Beira or to to district level. Once it happened, how can we do? Now it it needs to to to, to be written, and it needs to be followed by by the, by everyone. That would be the 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 the, the first uh, recommendation, and the second is to I don't know, but it it was to 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 to, to build a resilient construction and to put the the more valuable uh, things that we have in in health facility you know, in 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 this uh, high security room. We were. One time we need to to go back to the Minister of Health in order to 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 back up our our information, you know. Now that is uh, we need to to have this uh, health system information, the, the 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 normal one and the emergency one. When we are in emergency, how how system how health system information we we we, we can use. Okay, it's it it in the it it needs to be interchangeable. In this situation, we use this 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 system. On that situation, we use that on that system. You know, it was not easy to 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 recover all information. We need to get back to our central servers in in the Ministry of Health, and then we start to reconstruct the information. The district level come to the province, and the province come to the to to the Ministry of Health, and that is the second. How can we mm, protect our our information information system and how and it is important to activate some some mechanism some way that we able to use in case of emergence yeah that, that is the <laughs> that is the second question maybe that system that we can we can only use in case of a emergence not as the routine but in case of emergence use this this on that and do do these two system must be able to communicate that is the the second recommendation that I could give. And another disconnected with this one is the is to build resilient the, the health facilities. You know, yeah, we need to to do is to to build better now to build once with the the capacity to oh let me so the the, 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 the capacity to hold on and. To hold on, uh, how is event in English? To hold on winds more than 200 kilometers per hour. That is needed right. because Beira, it is uh, in, in, in coastal area and we need to be aware that this is this event will come 
and they will come early uh, year by year and we need to be prepared you know we 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 don't need to be like we were at the day but we need to be prepared what is to come and what can we do now and how is, is it is it going to be that we will give you this two this two this three right. um, recommendation yeah for 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 our future occasion that we <laughs> expect <laughs> do not happen but we need to be prepared because of the the the, the, the geographical localization of the beta city great well um thank you very much uh i think i think we, we've used up our time um but thank you very much for you know in a sense explaining a little bit more about what's in the article and i think these um recommendations that you've made at the end are very valuable uh for other um health systems that are thinking about how do we uh build more climate resilient services and facilities um great thank you very much for chatting to me thank you prof both right. hey, <laughs> and you the please <laughs>